Hey there, teachers and students. My name is Benjamin, and I teach teachers the skills they need to pass certification exams. This is my series covering the Texas Math 7 through 12 exam for certification in Texas. This video is going to be covering part one of the section covering competency two, which requires the teachers to understand the complex number system, its structures, operations, algorithms, and representations. All right, so the name of this lesson is Intro to Complex Numbers. So first of all, I want you to recall our first video in the series. It was on real numbers and the sets that exist within the real number system. So rational numbers, integers, whole numbers, natural numbers, and irrational numbers. Well, you learn about a lot of algebra and trigonometry with numbers that exist within the real number set, but then you eventually get to a point in mathematics where you have to expand your mathematics outside of the real number set because there exists a situation where we get something called imaginary numbers. These imaginary numbers come about basically when you're trying to take a an even root of a negative number. And so our math would break down if we didn't come up with a way of expanding it to include those numbers. So what we get is we get the complex number set that includes real numbers and imaginary numbers. All right, so this complex number set is probably the largest set we'll ever need to work with. It includes all the real numbers, like I said, all the imaginary numbers, and of course the complex numbers which will have both real and imaginary parts. All right, so a complex number is typically written in the form a plus bi, you'll see that right here, a plus bi, where i is going to be equal to, and it's defined by, the square root of negative one. So in this form, a represents the real portion of a complex number, and bi represents the imaginary portion. Now, either a or b can be negative, of course, which means that all just real numbers and then also all the only imaginary numbers can still be considered complex numbers. So here are some examples of complex numbers. Um, you might see some written as like 2 plus 3i. That would be a complex number right there. It has a real part, which consists of the integer 2, and then the imaginary part, which consists of the term 3i. You might have something that's just like 18. 18 is just a real number, but because it's a real number, it also still exists inside the complex number set if you're considering it. You might just have literally i. You might have something that's just 3i. You could have something that's, some, that's along the lines of maybe two-thirds plus um, square root of 2i. All right, so here are some basic simplification problems designed to test your ability to recognize complex numbers. So here's the question in orange. What is the simplified expression for negative 5i cubed minus 3 times the quantity 6 plus i? So to simplify this problem, we are going to need to actually review some algebra for imaginary numbers. So I still have the problem kind of here on the top of the page, but I need you to recall that i is actually defined as the square root of negative 1. So in that case, if I was to consider the quantity i squared, that would actually be the square root of negative 1 squared. And hopefully you know that when you try to square something that's being squared, that you're taking the square root of, that basically cancels out and all you get is what's underneath the radical. So in that case, i cubed would just be to multiply another i to that, all right? And, all right, if i squared is defined as negative one, then i cubed would just be negative one times the square root of negative one, all right? So the square root of negative one is defined as i, and if you multiply i by negative one, then all you get is negative i. There's a little bit of gymnastics that we're doing there, but you can see hopefully that logically i cubed is going to ultimately be written as negative i. Now, let's take that a little bit further. What happens if we multiply i cubed by another i? Well, that's just going to be the square root of negative 1 squared times the square root of negative 1 squared, which is going to ultimately take us back to the square root of negative 1, which is going again bringing us back to i. So then you're going to just keep going through this loop. i to the power of 5 is going to be negative 1. i to the power of 6 is going to be negative i. And then i to the power of 7, i, back in a loop just like this. 
All right. So back to the question at hand. Let's see. I'll use my red pen to solve this. Negative 5i cubed minus 3 times the quantity 6 plus i. All right. So we defined up here that i cubed is actually just equal to negative i. So this part right here, I can just rewrite as negative 5 times negative i. And all that's going to come out to be is positive 5i. All right. Now, let's consider the rest of this expression that, uh, of this expression that we have here. 3 times the quantity 6 plus i. Now, of course, here with this 3, we're going to have to exercise the distributive property of multiplication over addition. So I'm going to distribute a negative 3, actually, onto both the 6 and the i. And I'm going to keep my 5i, my positive 5i. And I'm going to be um, left over here on the right side with negative 18, because negative 3 times 6 is, eight, is negative 18. And then negative 3i. So again, just the positive i times the negative 3 gives me negative 3i. At this point, all I have to do is combine like terms. 5i minus 3i should just give me 2i. There's nothing to combine 18 with. And if I just kind of rearrange this a little bit, I finally have the complex number negative 18 plus 2i. All right, so hopefully you kind of followed the algebra that I did there. Hopefully I didn't confuse you at all there. Let's go ahead and move on to another problem. It says, what is the simplified expression for 4 plus i? times quantity negative 3 plus 7i. Okay, so these are two binomials being multiplied together, and just because they're complex numbers also doesn't change the fact that we're just going to use normal real number algebra here. So I'm going to use the FOIL method here. And the way that I do the FOIL method personally is I'll take the first numbers first, 4 times negative 3, that'll give me negative 12. Then I'm going to take the inside numbers, i times negative 3, that's going to give me negative 3i. I'll add the last, the outside numbers, 4 and 7i. That's going to give me positive 28i. And then the last numbers only, plus 7i squared. And this i squared just showed up again. And that's kind of why we went over what happens when you square i. i squared, we defined as negative 1. So I'm going to go ahead and come back down here and rewrite this again a little bit negative 12 minus 3i plus 28i plus 7 times negative 1. All right, and forgive me for rewriting so much, but I just want to make sure that I don't uh, you know, miss any steps for you. This negative 7, I'm sorry, this 7 times negative 1 is going to just come out to be negative 7. All right, so negative 12 minus 3i plus 28i minus 7. And from this point, now we can go ahead and just start combining like terms. My constant terms, negative 12 and negative 7, which should kind of come together and give me negative 19. And then if I combine my imaginary terms, those are going to give me positive 25i, just because 28i minus 3i should give me 25i. Now, this is already in the format that I want it. This looks exactly like a plus bi. And that's the most simplified version of this expression. All right, so hopefully you feel pretty good about the FOIL method. Let's do one more together. Um, this one's going to be a little bit trickier because there's a division sign in between those two binomials. So the way that I'm actually going to rewrite this when it's saying to simplify the expression 5 plus 2i divided by the quantity 1 plus 3i is I'm going to go ahead and write 5 plus 2i as a numerator in a ratio. All right, so 5 plus 2i on top divided by 1 minus 3i. All right, so the way I want to simplify this is I'm actually going to go ahead and multiply the numerator and the denominator here by the conjugate. And this is a pretty common algebraic technique for simplifying fractions that are uh, full expressions. So the conjugate there of that denominator is going to be 1 plus 3i over 1 plus 3i. Hopefully you're familiar with this algebraic technique. If not, we might have to review some of this in a later video. But let's go ahead and go forward with this. We're going to foil out the top and we're going to foil out the bottom. Now, 
bear with me here. We have five times one, which is five. We have two i times one, which is just gonna be plus two i. We have five times three i, which should give us 15 i. And then we have two i times three i, which is gonna give us six times i squared, which of course is just gonna be uh, negative six. All right, so let's go ahead and do the bottom. One times one is one. Negative three i times one is just gonna be negative three i. We have one times three i, which is gonna be positive three i. And then we're gonna have negative three i times positive three i, which is going to be negative nine times negative one. So that's gonna be positive nine. And hopefully you'll see now why multiplying by that conjugate and um, trying to get, multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator in this case is actually a use, useful algebraic technique because this negative three i and this positive three i are actually going to cancel when you do that. So your variable term are usually gonna cancel when you do this technique and that's why we do it. So then all we have to do is add like terms on the bottom. That's gonna give us just, I'm gonna rewrite here on the bottom left, five plus 2i plus 15i minus 6 over all over 10 because 1 plus 9 is 10. Now let me go ahead and add like terms on the top. That 5, pl uh, five plus negative 6 should just give me negative 1. And then 2i plus 15i, all right, 2i plus 15i should come out to 17i all over 10. Now I'm almost done here, but if I wanna write this in a way that looks exactly like a plus bi, I can separate the numerator because the denominator is common. So I could write this as negative 1 tenth plus 17 over 10 i. All right, and then now we have, of course, ratios for our a and b, but it's still in the form of a plus bi. All right, so that's all for this topic. If you have any questions or need further practice, don't hesitate to get in touch with me via the email address listed below. Also, please smash the like button if you don't mind, but more importantly, share this resource with other teachers who might need it. I'll see you in the next one.